The best mini forum NAS is not what you think. So with the last release of Mini's forum NAS N5 Pro, you might think this will be yet another video about it, but uh, you're wrong. As you can see here, I have a few components on my table, two sticks of 64GB SOD memory for total 128GB, five normal size 2280 NVMe and one smaller 2230 for operating system. So you might be confused, what mini forum device can handle 128 gigs of RAM and six SSDs? Meet Mini's forum MSA2. Yep, you see this right. We'll be building NAS out of MSA2 with six SSDs. Almost 1000 euros or $850 for the bare bones 9955HX model isn't cheap, but compared to those N100 NAS alternatives with 16 Zen 5 cores versus 5 efficiency cores plus dual 10 GSFP plus ports, it's actually steel. So let's talk how is this even possible. So within MSA2 we already have three NVMe slots that are for PCIe 4.0 X4 capable, but keep in mind that by default two of those M.2 slots are set to PCIe 3.0 in BIOS, so you might need to change that uh, into the PCIe 4 in order to get full bandwidth. And once set to Gen 4, each drive gets full bandwidth, four lanes of full PCIe 4.0, uh, which means you will get about 8 gigs of theoretical throughput per drive. Of course, your mileage may vary due to overheating and also due to the drives you will put inside, obviously. But what I did here also is that I have PCIe 4.0 X8 slot, which supports bifurcation. So What's the bifurcation? It's a motherboard feature that splits PCI lanes at the electrical level and the X8 slot gets 8 lanes that get divided into two X4 connections in that scenario. But keep in mind, you need support for this in the BIOS and you have to enable this manually, which fortunately A2 supports. In order to enable bifurcation, change PCIe slot setting from X8 into the X4 X4, which will enable bifurcation, and each SSD of that adapter card will get its own by four lanes. The adapter I have here, I got for just about 10 bucks from AliExpress. This is purely passive, just routes the signals to two M.2 slots that are on this adapter. Keep in mind, you might find a lot more expensive adapters which are not passive. And if your motherboard doesn't support bifurcation, those are great because they have multiplexing and you can actually run multiple NVMEs out of this, but they are very, very expensive. So try to buy motherboard that actually supports bifurcation. It will be a lot cheaper for you. So now is the tricky part. Where does the sixth SSD go, right? Because we filled all the slots. So first thing we need to understand that we'll only use those five M.2 slots for storage disks and the sixth will be used only for operating system. And that's where this 20 to 30 one terabyte PNI comes into play. But there's no M.2 slot left that's capable of NVMe, right? Well, here's the thing. There's actually a Wi-Fi card in this MS-82 and that Wi-Fi card is using an M.2 slot. Just a different kind. Uh, it's an E key M.2, while NVMe M.2s are M key. It's a different pin configuration, different notch position, and because of that different protocol support. But, well, we can do AliExpress once again to rescue us. And you can probably find this on Amazon too, but I found very nice tiny adapter that fits almost perfectly into the MS-82. It's an M key to B plus E key adapter. Obviously you will lose Wi-Fi functionality, but for a NAS with dual 10G ports, who needs Wi-Fi anyway, right? It's almost perfect fit because as you can see, the fan connector is difficult to reach, but you can still connect the fan if you do that before actually inserting M.2 adapter. And so it should be fine. Adapter like those usually cost five to $10. I bought those like eight pieces each one for $1. But let me tell you about my first atoms though. So at first I used this adapter with ribbon cable I bought on Amazon to just check this configuration. It looked very convenient, flexible placement. I was thinking maybe I would route that differently and put it somewhere else in the chassis. 
So what could go wrong? Well, obviously everything. It was terrible. I got constant connection errors, random disconnects during file operations. So the ribbon cables has a big problem with signal integrity. These chip cables can't handle the high frequency signals properly, causing errors and disconnects. I've had similar issues with Raspberry Pi and VME adapters. Keep that in mind and try just not to use ribbon cables and try to find adapter like this one, which is very small and just connects just on the PCB. Even though this is kind of hack because we are putting NVMe into the Wi-Fi slot, uh, it's still PCIe 3.0 X1 and that's about one gigabyte per second. So that's still plenty of bandwidth to run just operating system. So if you're looking for setup like this, definitely get the solid adapter without any ribbon cable, much more reliable. The blocked fan connector is a small price to pay for actually having a working system drive. So let's put everything together. First, the RAM. 128 gigs across two sticks, then our five storage NVMEs. I'm using four terabyte drives here, mix of Samsung WD Black and some other random stuff I bought out of Amazon. And finally, our little OS drive connected through the Wi-Fi slot adapter. And voila, we now have five disk NAS array plus separate OS drive on our Minis Forum MS82, which fits entirely into its original case without issues. So after closing the enclosure, I've connected power cable, ethernet, and also HDMI to be able to install just freshly released Debian 13 on that PNI one terabyte NVMe connected via adapter, which by the way, we normally call the Wi-Fi slot. All six drives are visible on the system. I was able to create a write zero for testing, write five for actual redundancy to do some benchmarks. There was one problem though, because uh, using that adapter caused some issue with the system. So I had to uh, disable power management on the NVMe slots in the grab settings. Unfortunately, you cannot do this per slot. I had to dis disable that throughout the whole machine, but that's not a big problem since this is meant to be a NAS and it's meant to be running 24 seven anyway. So with my RAID 5 configuration, I got 16 terabytes of usable capacity with single draft failure protection. But here's the interesting part. There are eight terabyte NVMEs available now, like WD Black SN850X, eight terabyte or Lexar NM790. So if you max this out with eight terabyte drives, you're looking at 32 of usable space with RAID 5. Performance wise, individual drives hit about the rated speeds uh, from five to seven gigabytes per second on that PCIe drives, regardless of if it's internal slot or that slot via PCIe card adapter. For RAID 5, it's a lot more CPU expensive to calculate where different chunks of data had to be placed. So I was able to hit about four gigabytes per second in sequential reads and two and a half sequential writes, but it's still plenty. If you're interested, write zero results were off the charts, 30, 30 gigabytes per second sequential reads and 13 gigabytes per second uh, sequential writes. So that's a lot. But of course you don't build NAS with write zero because you don't, you will need a redundancy. You don't want to lose data if one of these fails. And by the way, in here I have some Chinese brand, which as I read on the internet, is very much prone to failure after a few months. So we will see how that goes, by the way. Regarding IOPS, I was able to hit one and a half million IOPS in write zero, which is for both random reads and writes 4K, but in write five, which is more realistic scenario for you, that wasn't as that great. It was about 350K IOPS random reads and about 170K IOPS for random writes. Of course, it's a, a quite a bump down from a NVMe's native performance, but hey, you still have a lot of internal performance for synchronization uh, and so on when needed. And anyway, you will not be able to saturate this over a 20 gig link. And again, the best part of this setup is that operating system is not on some very slow SD card or EMMC or whatnot, but it's still using NVMe protocol, just a slower one, uh, but I'm still able to hit about one gigabyte uh, per second sequential reads. So if you need to do system update, download some Docker containers, all of that stuff, it's still a quite a fast disk to do such things.
Uh, speaking about networking, since I just mentioned 20 gig link, the MS82 as well as MS01 has two SFP plus ports that supports 10G. So you can put SFP plus transceiver uh, for the fiber or for the RG45 port if you want. And in LACP configuration, we can get aggregate 20 gigabit per second bandwidth, which you must understand that it is only 10 gigabit per single TCP connection. And speaking of real world usage, uh, with 10G networking, you can separate the link very easily. The NVMe array has way more bandwidth than the network can handle. So for local operations like running VMs directly off the NAS or doing video editing or watching your Plex media server videos uh, like Big Bug Bunny, you can utilize that full array speed very, very easily. But speaking of um, using this as a real tool, uh, the power consumption is not that great. Just booting up this device draws about 50 to 60 watts and during active write 5 operations reading and writing when I was doing benchmarks I was looking at 10 uh, up to 10 15 watts even that's a lot higher than those n100 NAS boxes but remember we are getting a 60 core zen 5 beast here and not this very slow n100 so you can do much much more things with this computer so if you're looking for a high performance nvme nas that can hold huge amounts of data up to 32 terabyte usable with redundancy. The MS82 is actually perfect for that. It's not marketed as a NAS. Minis form just released N5 Pro NAS, but with some creative adapter usage, as you saw in this video, it becomes one of the most powerful compact NAS solutions you can build. Yes, I know it's not the cheapest option that you have on the market. It's far from cheap. If you just want a NAS to store data, you probably should look somewhere else. But if you want the performance and capacity in in this form factor, there is nothing really else that comes close to this. If you try finding other devices, even on AliExpress, which has probably the cheapest prices, uh, you will find that it's very, very difficult to find anything similar in this price point. So I hope you learned something here. Uh, see a cool way to use your MS82. Keep in mind, this video is only about MS-82 because MS-01 doesn't support bifurcation and also NVMe slots in that systems are slower. So even if you find the adapter card for MS-01, uh, you won't be able to get a speed that I have on MS-82. So good luck with your systems. See you in the next one. And I'm going to move this MS-82 system into my rack and add it into my Kubernetes and Ceph cluster for more storage. See you.